Did we get a leak of the new Lions uniforms? You are Locked On Lions, your daily Detroit Lions podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's good, everybody? Matt Derry with you. It is a Wednesday edition of Locked On Lions right here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Indeed, your team every day. It's Wednesday, April 17th and a Thursday, April 18th. Thanks for checking us out wherever you get your podcast. Shout out to our everydayers who would check out the show each and every day, whether you're listening, whether you're watching on our Locked On Lions YouTube channel. We appreciate all of you. Busy show today and for tomorrow. Man, oh man, tomorrow will mark the one-week mark until the NFL draft right here in Detroit on April the 25th. Got a lot to discuss today on the program. First and foremost, Locked On Lions is brought to you by our friends at LinkedIn. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. You can follow us on Twitter at Dairy Speaks at Locked On Lions as well. Matt Derry Facebook fan page. We appreciate everybody that uh, chimes in, DMs me on there, and as well on our Locked On Lions YouTube channel. Please subscribe and watch the show each and every day. All right, we got a a possibility of leaked uniforms. We got to get into that. Dane Brugler, seven-round mock draft at theathletic.com. And if you're going down to the draft, you're going to be standing outside on Thursday night. When I I tell you about this mock draft, you might not like it, but we will uh, uh, get into that. Coming up momentarily on the program. What else we got going on? We've got a new slogan that apparently Brock Wright has uh, uh, told everybody about uh, in his press conference yesterday and the latest on Jared Goff contract talks. All of that today right here on Lockdown Lions. We're chasing down some great guests for the end of the week and for next week as well to get you ready for the draft. Contacted Trevor Sickman. Contacted Jim Nagy. Uh, we got a Michigan Wolverine that's in this draft that we're working on. So a lot to get to in the next week or so as we get you ready for the draft uh, next week. And don't forget tonight, um, live and direct on the uh, Lockdown Network on our uh, YouTube channel is going to be the uh, Lockdown NFL mock draft. So uh, check that out as well. Where are the details on that? Uh, I know I've got them here somewhere. Uh, Yes, uh, Lockdown NFL mock draft available now. Find the ultimate uh, six episode series on lockdown NFL draft to hear who the, lo- uh, the local lockdown experts are picking for every NFL franchise, live reactions from local college football experts, and even the fantasy football angle lockdown NFL mock draft available now on the lockdown NFL draft on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast. I wanted to, uh, get that in faux show. All right, here's the news of the day. I got a couple of text messages from friends that say you got to go on the click on Detroit dot com website or the dicks website um by the way what's up brother and uh shout out to sketch all right so i go to click on detroit and here it is did dicks accidentally reveal new detroit lions jerseys a day early now again tomorrow night at seven the lions are revealing their jerseys and uniforms to the masses including uh, season ticket holders and season ticket members and everybody else down at ford field on the Dick's website, they are now selling these jerseys, but no one knows if they're real, if it's fake. No one's confirmed this, all right? But a lot of people are asking the question on social media. If you go on the clickondetroit.com website and look, I'm not going to get too much into it because um, I don't know if this is real or not, but there are black uniforms, white uniforms, gray jerseys, and blue jerseys all on the site. The key to all of these uniforms, I remember yesterday, for those of you that missed it, the Lions did put out on social media a little bit of a teaser. And in the teaser, it looks like there are no stripes and it's just really a clean look. On the Dick's website and at clickondetroit.com where the article is, is there, there are black uniforms with the white lions and just blue numbers on the front. The white uniform has blue lions with blue on the front, uh, the numbers, gray uniforms, blue and lions and lettering with sort of grayish blue numbers. There are no stripes anywhere on these uniforms. Totally a clean look. And then the blue jerseys with gray numbers, 
uh, don't say Lions on them. It just has the NFL logo uh, at the top. But those are sort of more aqua than we're used to seeing a little bit. But those are really, really clean and kind of look like the old throwbacks that the Lions wore for many, many years. But again, I'm not seeing any stripes on the on the sides or on the uh, on the sleeves or anything like that. It is a totally clean look. But there are black, white, gray, and blue all on the Dick's website and on ClickOnDetroit.com. Here's what I'll say: uh, I'm against black uniforms. I've said that. I, I love the Lions colors. Honolulu blue and silver. What the Lions colors are. When the Lions went with the black uniforms years ago, I just I didn't like them. All right. I know I'm kind of in the minority on this and I mostly like black uniforms and I love the color black. Don't get me wrong. But to me, this is an old school franchise. This is a traditional franchise, a team that was playing outdoors at Brink Stadium in the thirties and all these things. I prefer to stay with the blue and silver. All right. These silver jerseys, they, they almost look grayish, but these silver jerseys that are on the Dick's website, um, are more gray to me than silver and don't look like the color rush at all. But I love the no stripes. I love the simplistic look, the classic look, something that Rod Wood had talked about. So um, go to clickondetroit.com uh, or even the Dick's website if it's still up there and, and take a look for yourself. We'll have the reveal again tomorrow night. Um, as far as a mock draft to really dive into today, Dane Brugler from theathletic.com put out a Lions Put out a seven-round mock draft for every team um, today. Put out a, just a just a seven-round mock draft uh, and went pick by pick, which is wild. All right, a full seven-round mock. And I had seen this today. The Lions announced. The NFL announced that the Lions are going to have four. There are four young. There are four kids um, from some group that's going to announce the Lions pick at number twenty-nine. What if the Lions don't pick? All right, in the Dane Brugler full seven-round mock draft that came out today at theathletic.com, he has the Lions trading pick 29 to the Raiders. In exchange, the Lions get a second-round pick at number 44 and an additional third-round pick at 77. So 44 and 77 for 29. That would then mean that everybody on Thursday that comes down for the draft Hardcore Lion fans, diehards are going to be down there by the stage or down the street watching or wherever you were, you were going to be um, in the crowd somewhere. You would not, you would go home without a pick. Uh, in this mock draft, Brugler has the Raiders moving up to 29 so they can get Michael Penix, the quarterback from Washington. Um, the Lions at pick 44 on day two would select Zach Frazier, the center slash guard from West Virginia. Yesterday, we talked about it with Ryan McChrystal from um, Sharp uh, Sharp Analytics, Sharp, uh, Sharp Football Analysis. Um, Frazier is a guy that Peter Schrager had in his NFL Network uh, mock draft. Daniel Jeremiah also mocked him back in February to the Lions. So Zach Frazier, an interior offensive lineman, slipping to 44, and the Lions still get him at 44. As you heard Ryan say yesterday on the show, he thinks Frazier is pretty much a center only. And again, that would be best available and best on the, uh, you know, best on the board type of pick for the Lions who don't need a starting offensive lineman right away. Not with a group that's coming back next year with Decker, Glasgow, Ragnow, um, uh, Zeitler, and uh, the all-everything right tackle, Panay Sewell. So that would be the 44th pick. Then the Lions would have their own pick at 61 in the second round. And in the Dane Brugler mock draft, they have the Lions. He has the Lions taking Braden Fisk, defensive tackle from Florida State. Interior pass rusher, could be a starter, not real long, but a guy that is a very, very solid performer at the college level uh, and fast. Braden Fisk, D-tackle at 61. Interesting to me that the first two picks in this mock draft are not starters. Braden Fisk would not necessarily start for the Lions because they have McNeil and Reeder. And of course, Frazier wouldn't start because the Lions have Ragnow, Zeitler, and uh, Glasgow, in case, unless there was some sort of injury early in the year. At pick 73, the Lions' own third round pick, Brugler has Detroit taking wide receiver Jalen Polk from Washington. 
I don't see Polk dropping that far at uh, um, 73. But 6'1 and a half, 203 pounds, outside receiver, big body, good speed, um, and a need. The Lions need an outside receiver. That would be pick 73. Pick 77 uh, has the Lions taking a cornerback with their extra third round pick. Kalen Carson, who worked out for the team last week, the cover man from Wake Forest. Uh, we talked about Carson and his versatility. He can play inside, can play outside. Was a four-year starter at Wake. Very good tackler. Um, not great in coverage yet, but a guy with a lot of upside. He would go to the Lions with their second and third round pick in this mock draft. So we'd have Zach Frazier, Braden Fisk, Jalen Polk, and Kalen Carson as the first four picks in this Dane Brugler seven-round mock draft from The Athletic. Dot com. We'll get you the rest uh, rest of the picks from this mock draft. We'll talk about Jared Goff a little bit and also the Lions' new apparent slogan for the year. We will do uh, all of that coming up next right here on Locked On Lions. Great to have our friends from LinkedIn back with us here on Locked On Lions. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality, uh, quality professionals that are right for the role, all right? That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools you have to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. I've posted jobs on LinkedIn Jobs before for my everyday job, my nine to five job at Financial Architects, and it's easy, hassle-free, and they handle a lot of stuff for you. LinkedIn isn't just a job board. LinkedIn helps you hire professionals you can't find anywhere else. Even those who aren't actively searching for a new job might be open to the perfect role and having a conversation with you. In a given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit other leading job sites. So if you're not looking on LinkedIn, you're looking in the wrong place. On LinkedIn, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. Hire professionals like a professional on LinkedIn. Here's what I want you to do. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash LockedOnNFL. That's linkedin.com slash LockedOnNFL to post your job for free, terms and conditions apply. Another day, another show. Locked on Lions right here on the Locked on Podcast Network. Indeed, your team every day. Thanks for making us your first listen and checking us out wherever you get your podcast. A Wednesday edition of Locked on Lions. We are just one week and one day away from draft night. Number one uh, right here in Detroit. Should be a lot of fun. I see the stage going up, all this stuff downtown. It is going to be awesome and our city is going to get some uh, nice publicity publicity and uh, exposure, that is for sure. All right, we told you about the first four picks in the Dane Brugler mock where the Lions trading back to have two second round picks and two third round picks. In the fourth round, um, Brugler has the Lions at 164 selecting Braden McGregor Edge rusher from Michigan. So a local boy coming home. Um, you remember McGregor from the 2022 uh, recruiting class was like the number one recruit for Jim Harbaugh. Is he going to be the next Aiden Hutchinson? I don't know, but really a solid, solid player who came on this past year as a starter and would be a backup, an edge. You know, he's got a really good motor. You know, Braden McGregor plays very hard. He had a really good game in that uh, national semifinal game, right out, right onto the shoot uh, at, against Alabama, was, was getting in the backfield there uh, in that game. So they go edge with their fifth pick in this draft. What is very, very interesting about their sixth, um, two picks that they have in the sixth round, one is a kicker. What's the rule? What's my guy Cleve T.A. always say on Twitter, at C-L-E-V-T-A? Never draft kickers. Will Reichert from Alabama, who of course uh, drilled, I think he drilled, what, a 52-yard field goal in the Rose Bowl against Michigan, uh, would be pick number 201. I wouldn't necessarily be against that. They've got to have competition for Michael Badgley. We've talked about Jake Bates from the Michigan Panthers, but what if another team offers him more money? We'll see. And then their second six-round pick, um, would be Sione Vaki, 
the safety from Utah. Now we know this. Baki visited the Lions um, a couple weeks ago. He has been to Allen Park. I like what Brugler wrote in the piece. He said, if there is a player in this draft who has bitten a kneecap, Vaki is that guy. So there's no mystery why the Lions are showing considerable interest in the versatile safety. And he also played some running back from Utah. Sione Vaki, to me, and I don't watch a ton of Utah tape, but I've read enough about him. Uh, if he lasted until pick number 205, I'd be very surprised. Very surprised. But if he's there, we know the Lions need another safety. We know they have interest in him because they brought him down in park. And outside of Melifonu and Kirby Joseph right now, they've got to add another safety. So that would be an interesting pick, certainly for the Lions, uh, at pick 205. And then their last pick at 249, Johnny Dixon, a cornerback from Penn State. When in doubt, right, when you've got a late pick, similar to when Lucas was taken, Chase Lucas, take a cornerback in the seventh round. You know, so... Johnny Dixon, man coverage corner, uh, would start off likely as a guy that would play a lot of special teams, uh, would be your last pick. So the Lions would get two, two corners in this mock draft, a safety, a kicker, an edge, a receiver, a defensive tackle, and an offensive lineman. All positions that we figured the Lions would fill in this mock draft from Dane Brugler. I love Jalen Polk from Washington. I think he's a really good receiver. I know the Huskies were loaded with, you know, Roma Dunze and, and all that. They had a really good receiving core, but Polk can really play. Um, and I think Zach Frazier eventually is going to be a starter in this league. And look, if Frank Ragnow was considering retirement after this season and he's so beat up and he's had so many injuries, you got to cover your bases there. And Frazier, everybody says, is a Lions type of guy. So that is the uh, seven round Dane Brugler mock draft at theathletic.com. Um, all right. Saw something interesting, not necessarily interesting, but everybody's been talking about it um, the other day when I, or yesterday when I was reading on the Lions Wire about Brock Wright talking about, hey, look, I, I really wanted to come back to Detroit. This is, this place has meant everything to me. I'm glad that they um, matched the offer sheet from the Niners and everything else. But Brock Wright said yesterday at a press conference as the team is holding voluntary workouts down at 222. Um, quote, we've kind of been talking, and the motto for this season is it takes more. So I think everybody will have to step up their game. End quote. So I don't know if this is the motto. I don't know if it's up on the walls at Allen Park. I don't know if there's signage being made, but it takes more. Sounds like the 2024 mantra and slogan for this Lions team. Um it's pretty simple. It's, uh, you know, Brock Wright went on to say, hold on, quote, I think it's everything. It's a holistic approach. Starts at the top with Brad and Dan all the way down. Coming here, starting OTAs, it takes more to prepare and then getting into training camp in the season. Just got to go above and beyond in every aspect, knowing that we got so close last year. But there's even more that we've got to do if we want to win it all this year, end quote. Look, here's the bottom line. You know, there's been a lot of talk about expectations. You know, the Red Wings. Uh, were the expectations going into the season to make the playoffs? For some fans, yes. For others, they're like, ah, eyes are playing year five. It's, you know, still a young group, although they got older as the season went on. Then when the Wings were tasting the playoffs during the season, everyone's like, playoffs, we got to make it. Then, of course, they struggled at the end of the year, had a great last week, but it, they fell short. The expectations for the Lions, it does take more if you want to get to the Super Bowl. It takes more like, takes more pass rush. It takes more weapons on offense. It takes more on the back end in that cornerback room, right? And it's going to take some more from Dan, for Dan Campbell to want to utilize his kicker a little bit more and have some faith in his special teams. Um, and, and for Dan Campbell to even get better this year in decision-making. So yes, it takes more, I think is good. This team practices and plays very, very hard. I don't think it's about effort. I think it takes more talent for sure. And, you know, a little bit of luck too, because in that NFC championship game, the ball's bouncing off people's face masks and going up into the air. All right. Maybe Jalen Polk, as we talked about in this mock draft, turns out to be better than Josh Reynolds if he's on the team or whatever it is. And he'll catch that ball 
as opposed to Reynolds dropping it. Little things. But I like it takes more. But I think this team needs to add more talent defensively. Certainly they've added more talent already with DJ Reader, who's an upgrade, Carlton Davis, who's an upgrade at positions of need. I think they need another edge. We talked about it. And, um, but I like that. It takes more. The expectations for everybody is going to be Super Bowl, winning the NFC. Uh, I think that's fair when you get to the NFC Championship game. I think if they got back to the NFC Championship game and played a similar type of game or happened to come up short, I don't think we're blowing the team up. I don't think this window is small. This is a young team. You're going to have a lot of guys back for a long time. But yeah, I mean, we're all thinking Super Bowl around here because it's a really good team. But I got news for you. Schedule's going to be hard, and the division's going to be better. What did Jared Goff have to say about a new contract with the Lions? He spoke yesterday. We will get into that coming up next right here on Locked On Lions. All right, so I told my wife about this, and she is very, very excited. Very excited. That is because Monopoly Go is with us here on Locked On Lions. We've all been there, either as a player or a fan. It's halftime, and the scoreboard's not looking good, right? You're feeling low. Not sure you or your team can pull out a win. That's when you dig deep, lift your head up, and say to yourself, time to get back in the game, pull off some bank heists, and take as much of my friend's money as I possibly can. That's right. The smash hit mobile game Monopoly Go lets you compete with your friends to get the most riches and the biggest empire. It's the Monopoly you love, but on your phone, anytime with tons of new twists, including leaderboards to compare your progress to your buddies, there's so much to do. Play on countless dynamic Monopoly boards. Make your friends bankrupt by smashing their landmarks with a wrecking ball. Charge other players rent for your iconic properties. You can even work with your friends to crack open a community chest and in tournaments to get extra rewards and climb the leaderboard. Like I told you the other day, my wife loves Monopoly Go. She plays all the time. So get back out there, put on your game face, and download Monopoly Go, now free on the App Store or on Google Play. So we've touched on it right here on uh, LO Lions here uh, a couple times. Uh, Jared Goff is going to get paid. And Jared Goff might get $50 million. Kirk Cousins is making 45. Kyler Murray's making 47. Deshaun Watson's at like 45, 46. And now it's time to pay the piper. Jared Goff has one year left on his contract, but I don't think the Detroit Lions want to go into uh, you know, next season without getting a deal done. I think they'll want to lock up Amon Ross St. Brown, Aleem McNeil, Jared Goff, among others, maybe even Taylor Decker. Goff was asked. Uh, yesterday in Allen Park about a uh, contract extension as he's going to earn this season $22.3 million and it has a cap hit of a $32.3 million. Um, you know, like we talked about, speculation is it could be a $50 million deal. Adam Schefter was on with us the other day and said the same thing. Um, Goff did acknowledge the talks have gone on when he was asked about it at uh, voluntary workouts yesterday. Quote, there have been discussions, but I'll leave it at that. He added, it's been amazing, man. I love it here. And I would love to be here for a long time. Really special. Like I said, play in front of these fans. Being able to provide a winning culture in the last year and a half or so and see them experience that and be a part of that has been fun. By no means are we satisfied or happy to be out here or any of that. It's about what's next. End quote. Um, You love hearing that from Jared Goff. And let's be honest here. He's a real leader. He's been great. He's been better than I thought. The expectations for him, I thought, were meh, kind of mid. Like, I didn't expect that much. Uh, The Jared Goff that we saw in the first year, there were some highs and lows, but what didn't take care of the football. But start of the second half of last of two seasons ago, and then all of last year, leading this team to nine wins, 14 wins this past year, 12 plus the two playoff wins. Jared Goff is the quarterback here. And you've got to kind of give him what he wants. He's got more of the leverage than anybody else, right? Now, could you franchise tag him after this year? Yes. But I don't think the Lions want to do that. Does the organization maybe think he's more in that $47 million range right around where Kirk Cousins is after Kirk got four at uh, 180 from the Falcons? Or could Goff get a five in front of the number? 
and get $50 million and join the likes of Joe Burrow and the others that are in that $50 million range. It's not about who the better quarterbacks are sometimes. It's about timing. Remember, Cousins was once the highest paid quarterback in the league. Matthew Stafford, when he signed with the Lions, was the high, uh, on his third contract, was the highest a paid quarterback for a while. So um, I like that Jared Goff has acknowledged it. I like that he has brought it up and said, look, we're having some talks. That's good. He wants to be here. and He's under 30. Um, so I would expect the Lions to hopefully get something done after the draft when they can focus on that and they know what their roster really looks like after uh, they draft players. And that's where their focus is right now. Uh, but I'm happy that Jared Goff has acknowledged the talks have gone on. We know in the past, the Lions have let too many people walk. This regime seems to get it. This ownership gets it. But now they've got to take care of their guy. Look at all of these teams that are trying to trade up. Look at all these teams that are jockeying for position to maybe get J.J. McCarthy, who's no lock to be a good NFL quarterback. All right? Uh, um, uh, Caleb Williams was, you know, is is everybody's number one pick, right? Did you watch him this year at USC? There were some games. He was terrible. Hero ball, throwing interceptions, crying on the sidelines, moping. That's the number one pick. There's no lock he's going to be great. When you've got a guy that for the last two years has really looked the part and in the past has played in Super Bowls, you've got to lock those guys up. I think that's what the Lions are going to do with Jared Goff. This has been a Wednesday edition of Locked On Lions right here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Thanks for making us your first listen, everybody. Checking us out wherever you get your podcasts. We are back again tomorrow.